Hello and welcome to the next video in this CraftCMS tutorial series. In this video, we're going to set up image transforms so that we're not loading full resolution versions of images throughout the website. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to tackle is the hero background image because this is quite a large area and people might upload a very large image like a 4,000, 6,000 pixel wide image which would be probably a couple of megabytes and that's way too much to be loading on our page. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into the craft admin panel and go to settings, assets, image transforms, and here we can create a new image transform. So we have a few options. We can crop images. So if we get um, an image uploaded, we can crop it to a specific aspect ratio, for example, square, or a real long uh, wide banner shape, um, or we can fit it so it retains its original aspect ratio, but we just resize it down. Or we can stretch it, um, which I i don't think I've ever used because that makes images look uh, stretched in one way or in one direction or the other. So I usually use either crop or fit. So for the hero background images, let's create a name for them and we'll just call it hero. And I want to fit them. I would just want to scale them down and keep their aspect ratio. I don't need to crop them to any particular shape. So I'm going to say they can have a maximum width of 1400 and a maximum height of 900. You can control the quality of these. And when you're really trying to optimize a website, I definitely would recommend playing around with this to get the best balance of um, file size and image quality. I notice a lot of times for hero images where there's a dark overlay, you can get away with a much lower quality setting. So maybe a medium um, and you save some because it's not noticeable through the dark overlay. Um, but yeah, you can play around with that. I'm just gonna leave it auto for now. And let's go ahead and save this. And let's use this on the homepage. So if we go to the homepage here and open the console, let's see what we have here. I'm going to filter by hero. So we have hero.jpg. It's 169 kilobytes. And it is currently 1500 pixels wide and 1001 pixels tall. So let's apply our image transform to the hero background image. So if we go to our homepage template, that's where our hero is. Here we go. And for the background image, instead of just getting the images URL, which will be the original uploaded version of the image, we're going to use a method called get URL. And here we just pass in the name of our image transform. So if we go back and look at that, here's our hero image transform, 1400 by 900. The handle for it is just lowercase hero. So that's what we're gonna use here when we get our URL for the image. So let's save this and refresh. And let's see what happens here. So we went from 169 kilobytes down to 107, and it is only 1349 wide and 900 tall because we put a restriction. It can be up to 1400 wide or up to 900 tall, but keep its aspect ratio. So it's going to, one of those is gonna be uh, limit, it's gonna be hit first. So in this case, the height limit was hit first. Either way, there's our image. It is now never going to be a super large 6,000 pixel wide image in there. It will always be resized to 1400 wide as a maximum. So what else can we do here? If we scroll down, we'll tackle the slider images in a little bit, but let's look at the uh, meet the riders here. So we have these small images here and these are Currently, they are displayed at 100 pixels wide. So let's go ahead and create an image transform for these. And I'm just going to do one here. I'll just find Jack. Let me refresh. So six kilobytes. Henry is 5.7 and Sarah is 12.3. All right, so we'll keep this here so we can see the difference. So if we go back to our image transforms, we'll create a new one call it avatar. And in this example, we do actually want to crop it to a specific aspect ratio. 
So because these are perfect circles, we want the images to be perfect squares. We don't really want someone to one, upload, but also to render a very long or very tall photo if most of it's gonna be hidden away because it's cropped to a circle anyway. That's a waste of pixels that we're loading. So we want to crop them to a 100 pixel by 100 pixel square. So we will do crop for that. We can choose a focal point. So in this case, because these are headshots, we're gonna choose the center of the image in both directions, both vertical and horizontal. So that's fine. And we'll say 100 wide, 100 height. Again, we'll leave these as auto for now and save. So let's go to our template, our homepage template down at the bottom here. And here where we get the uh, photo URL for each person, we're just gonna use the same get URL method and pass in the handle for the transform, which is avatar. So let's go ahead and look at Sarah. She is 12.3 kilobytes and now 4.2 kilobytes and exactly 100 by 100 wide. It was 128 before. So between the three of them, we probably saved a few kilobytes. Uh, for this image up here, we saved uh, about 80 or so kilobytes. So pretty good um, improvement so far. All right, let's take a look at this slider here. So the largest these are displayed, so this is 820 wide. If we go to a story detail page and look at how wide this is, 880. So I'm going to say that these images should be um, 900 wide at a maximum. So we'll go to our image transforms and create a new transform. And we'll call this one slider. And in this case, let's crop them to a specific aspect ratio because they're all images in one slider window here. Uh, I don't really want to have some images that are short, some images that are really tall. We want them all to be the exact same aspect ratio and dimensions so that this slider is nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and say a maximum width of 900 and a height of 600. And we'll leave everything else default once again and save that. All right, so let's take a look at this. So if we look at this image, all right, Nile River, this is a good example. This image is 2000 pixels wide and 1300 pixels tall. So that's much larger than it needs to be for this small area. That's more than double the width that it needs to be. So let's filter by this. All right, so currently it is, I'll filter by images only here. Currently it's 519 kilobytes, so half of one megabyte. And again, as I mentioned, it is quite large. Yeah, if we open this up in the browser, you'll see that it's larger than it needs to be. So let's go ahead and go into our slider components. So we go templates, components, slider, and we'll look at the photo URL here and use get URL and use our image transform slider. And because this is a component that's used on the home page and the story detail pages, we just have to do it one place and all of the images are transformed. So let's refresh this 590 kilobytes down to 134. That is a huge improvement. And that's for each image, right? So there are one, two, three, three images in this slider. There could be 10 images, 20 images. So that is a huge savings right there. And if we click on the image, we can see that the native re resolution for this image is 900 by 600. So it has been properly resized. So that applied to this and that also applied on the homepage for all of these images. All right, one last thing we should look at for image transforms. If we go to our gear page, you can see that we embedded an image in a rich text field. So this is not going to be able to get our image transform because we can't do that on the template. So if we look at our general page template, we just have rich text being output. And that's what this is in. This image is in rich text. Let's take a look at it in the editor here, general pages, our gear. It's within here. So we can't use that get URL method and pass in our transform handle. 
But what we can do is when the images are added to the redactor editor here, we can say that they should automatically get a specific transform. So let's do that. Let's go to settings, fields, and we'll edit our rich text field. And down at the bottom, we have default transform, the default transform that should be applied when inserting images. So let's see here. Actually, we don't want any of these three here. We should create a new one specifically for images within rich text content. So if we look at this, it is 880 wide. So we'll create one specific for this. That's about the same size as the slider images, but we're just going to create a separate one. So let's go to settings, assets, image transforms, new image transform, and we'll call this content image. And we will, oh yeah, actually we don't want to, uh, the slider is cropping them. For images within rich text, we should just keep whatever aspect ratio that image has. So this is actually better to have its own transform anyway. But we will say it can have a maximum width of 900 and a maximum height of 600. And we'll leave everything else default. So we'll save that. And then we'll go back to our fields and edit that rich text field again here, now that we have the proper transform. And we'll choose a default transform for this field to be content image. So let's save this and go back to our page to edit the Our Gear page. Let's remove this image and then just pretend we're adding a new image in here. So if we select this again, we can select a specific transform, but if we don't, it will automatically choose this transform for us because we told it to. So let's save this and save again. And let's just take a peek at this image real quick before we refresh. Yeah, it was 2000 pixels wide, which is far greater than it needs to be for this area. So now that we have it in here, let's go ahead and refresh. And this should now be, yep, only 900 pixels wide. So that's how you use image transforms to dramatically reduce the file size of each page. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.